Hello and welcome to the next Spotlight video. Today we have the first voted on by you card, Swords to Plowshares. We are very excited about this one and hopefully you guys enjoy being able to vote on this. Uh, we're going to have you guys vote every single week and whatever the winner is, yeah. we will do. So, Even if there's one vote. If there's no votes, we'll talk about the basic lands. Yes, because there are six of them, technically. Yeah, technically. Um. Anyway, guys. For those of you who do not know, do they? Do, they don't tap for any mana. Waste. Yeah, they just tap for waste. They tap for generic. That's right. We're getting off topic already. I know. Someone told me once, and I thought that was wrong, and I knew you would know. Mm -hmm. It's like that. Of course, I would. BS. I don't know. Um, anyway, anyway, guys, Swords, Swords to Plowshares uh, we're all here. was originally printed in Alpha, and since then, yeah, the very first uh, in Paper Magic, it has been. Printed 22 times since then. Ooh, that's got to be a record. It is almost once a year since the game's inception, which is pretty wow. awesome. But for those that's of you who don't know, it is a one mana white instant yeah. uh, that basically exiles target creature, and then that creature's controller gains life equal to that creature's power. Now, that can be your creature or your opponent's creature, creature, and that's a really good, creature. important thing to note. Um, it's hugely strong, hugely powerful, played in uh, Legacy, Vintage, played everywhere. That yeah, it can be. Yeah, I absolutely. Um, where removal is king when removal is cheap and very powerful. And that is exactly what it is. It is one white and it can hit pretty much anything and deal with most any creature. Yes. Right? And deal with them pretty permanently. Yeah. Um, um, and life gain isn't that big of a deal. You know? That's the thing. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't want my opponent to gain life or something like that. Why is this card that good? Why not play Path to Exile, for instance? And sure. honestly, Swords is way better than Path yeah. because you do not want them a turn ahead of you on lands. No, no, sir. Um, life, you can always take back down. Mm -hmm. Lands, once they're out, they're a lot harder to actually get ahead, yeah. right? Like You're yeah. basically setting them up for their next turn, mm -hmm. and that's not a good way to go. So... That's why we see something like Path in Modern, but we don't see Swords in Modern because they would never reprint that uh, in a way that we could play it in Modern. Right. It's just way too good. Right. Um, so, and as you mentioned, it does hit almost everything, which means yeah. almost always you're going to be trading up. Uh, you know, it's a one-for-one one trade, yes, but you can one-for-one one a one-mana Swords for a Terastodon, and that for just instance. works, right? Like, that's right. fine. Um, it can be anything. Uh, indestructible, it gets around indestructible, which yep. is really, really nice. Uh, sometimes that can be problematic for some decks to deal with. Definitely. There are two uh, specific abilities that should be mentioned that make this a little bit tough when you're dealing with your opponent's creatures. Well, if they have hexproof, really. uh, you cannot target them. Yep. Target them, excuse me. Or if they have shroud, you cannot target them. Um, so obviously it doesn't get around those, but right. outside of that, it hits almost every creature, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, What's the card that gets played from Exile, though? Exactly, and that's the other downside. Uh, Mist Hollow Griffin. I knew it was a Griffin. Uh, there's also Eternal Scourge, which was recently printed, uh, which basically has the exact same effect that lets you play it from Exile, which means Swords mm -hmm. is not really good against those right. because they're just going to play it back, right? It's not that great. Um, you also see the Mist Hollow Griffin in Food Chain, Legacy Food Chain. Yeah. So it actually helps them by exiling it, to be honest, because they're just going <laughs> to yeah. play it back. So it's kind of not good in that situation. But right. in every other situation, it really, really is a powerhouse removal spell. And mm -hmm. like we said, it's played in Legacy, Vintage, Commander, everywhere yeah. that it can be played. And in fact, in Legacy, it is the ninth most played spell, uh, not creature, just spell in the actual format. It is the only white removal that's in that top 10 list. Um, any white deck is going to play it, essentially. Oh, absolutely. It's That's so easy so to awesome. throw into a white deck. Yeah. Like you just you should. You need to be able to answer things. It's an automatic 4 of. Absolutely. It's, well, not a 4 of always, but it's so good. It's super good. Yeah. I think between your main board and your sideboard, it's very rare to find a deck that doesn't have 4 in some ratio between yeah. those two. Um, yeah. because there are so many decks that this is good against. So, mm -hmm. uh, very, very powerful card. Thank you guys for voting. Uh, obviously, we will have a vote up. I believe it's already up, if uh, if I, my memory serves me correctly. I think so. um, but the voting for this time is between Mystic Snake, Merfolk Looter, and Armageddon. 
Uh, so, if you would like to vote, you can do that in the comment section below on this video, or you can go to the post on any of our social media sites, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, we've got it everywhere. We'll tally it up. Yeah, we'll tally it up. Whoever wins, we will make the video on that card. Uh, in addition, when we post about the next video, we will tag you, uh, so that way you get a little bit of a shout out that way. So, guys, thank you again. We hope you enjoyed this card spotlight video, and make sure to vote for the next one. We'll see you then.